Alright, I'm live. Oh no, what are you doing? You mess up a card! We're going to do the four, actually five A's of Boo Boo cards tonight on Fun University. Let's get this started. Be right back. Did it work? Not yet. Hi, I'm Mary Gunn. Welcome to Fun University. Hello, I'm Mary Gunn, Mary Gunn Fun Founder and Head Professor of this wonderful institution, Fun University, and your intrepid hostess of Craft Roulette, which is... My lens cap is on. <laughs> I'm going to figure that one out soon. This is always kind of a dicey place I start this business. Um, anyway, this is Craft Roulette and Craft... No, 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 this is Fun University and it is Craft Roulette's teaching component when Craft Roulette is the ultimate paper cra crafting card making game show challenge that we do every Friday night at 6.30 Central Time over on our sister channel, YouTube Craft Roulette. So, welcome, welcome. I see Grandma Gay is getting lavished with lots of love as she should. We're glad <laughs> that you're in the group in the front row like you should be <laughs> you guys in the back row will keep an eye on you this is um we're gonna talk if you if you've never been yes i did i just got a new school haircut my daughter takes good care of me um i've got really good news i'm so excited today it's probably why i'm a little bit giddy uh, I I got a thing in the mail at the beginning of August that said I was going to do I was ca being called for jury duty and I I've been carrying a load on my shoulders just afraid of being on a jury duty. You know what it, fr it frightened me? Well, besides the fact that I might mess up, the other thing that uh, frightened me was that I might be exposed to something really hideous and and scar me. But um, yeah. Anyway, got word out there, just behave so people don't have to go to do jury duty. And I'm excused for three years. So there you go. I just got that word today. I was supposed to happen tomorrow. And I kept, so everything was like on hold in my life. I don't like it. So anyway, boo boo cards. Some, things happen when you're making cards. We do make a lot of cards on Craft Roulette. Oh my gosh, we are over 9,000 total cards now, you guys. Oh, for the two plus years that we've been accepting cards. We do have wonderful spin sponsors each and every week now. We have three this September. We have Heffy Doodle, Prickly Pear, and My Sweet Petunia. They are all giving $25 gift certificates away each week for people that are on the cardboard. And to get on the cardboard, you have to send in a card. <laughs> then we do the... So right now we're taking cards from patrons from episode 128, I think. And... Um, if you want to be a patron, there's going to be more down below, and we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Yeah, we're already up to 141 this week, so that's a lot of cards, isn't it? You guys are <laughs> card rockers. I don't know what else to say. Um, but we do thank our spin sponsors. If you are out and about wanting to buy a little something, please vis visit them and tell them you came from Craft Roulette. We appreciate it. Sharon Ware was our guest this week, this last week. She was she's the owner of Prickly Pear Stamps. She was really really sweet. I really enjoyed um, hanging out with her. If you didn't see the show, uh, we're going to talk about the parameters that we got that we spend for that we get that are randomly selected. And then uh, she did a nice card, but she at the very end she had a little. And so we talked about boo-boos on cards, and I said that the cut that she made was a teabag card, but she kept insisting that it was a boo-boo card. So I started thinking about it, and I was going, well, we all make boo-boos, so let's talk about it tonight on uh, Fun University. So we are. But if you've never been to this, it, um, we're gonna, we have a little surprise for you. I think you're going to like it. First of all, let's go down to... That's not where I want to be. Let's go down to the paper cam, maybe. Paper cam. Paper cam, Mr. Producer. I can get the I can get the um, mouse and move it down. See if I can do that. Hang on. We redid some buttons <laughs> because, let me try it one more time. Paper cam, is it on? Yeah, it's on. Paper cam, 
Paper Cam. Come in, Paper Cam. Mike, Mike, can you help me out? No? I'm going to go right here. There we go. We'll just do it the old-fashioned way. Um, so I have some new buttons to deal with, but it was not my... We just didn't get that one connected. I did go out to the mailbox today and found all sorts of fun goods. Um, excited to share with you. Got a really cute card and wonderful letter from Katherine Taylor in Washington. By the way, there was a plane accident that was real freaky uh, just outside of where her beach is. And so she's okay if you are if you know her from the Chatterbox and the Facebook group. Um, she's okay. It was not too far from where her beach is though so it's kind of scary she sent this beautiful little card funny thing um i sent her this stamp also as a gift in a goodie bag and she already had it <laughs> i don't think that's ever happened at least that i know of and um so she called deputy heidi she's trying to grease the wheel and uh deputy heidi is going to accept now accepting the otters in in lieu of Catherine or Katie Taylor. So, um, isn't that cute? Isn't that cute? They're cut out, and they look like they're just swimming in water. You are otterly awesome. She sent a super nice letter, and she typed it so I, I could read it. <laughs> yes, Deputy Heidi, you're going to get it. How about that? That's pretty sweet, isn't it? Hey, Lee, it's good to see you, Grandma Gig, Christina. Oh, look at all you nice people. Lisa, Lynn. Yes, Lynn, does this look familiar? So look at that nice letter she typed me. Goodness gracious me, oh my. I am, I am well cared for. This will go up on my board. Now, you don't know this lady, but this lady <laughs> is a, um, sent me this card because she used to be in my scrapbook group when I used to sell scrapbooking things. Um, and she would often be at, not available to... Um, attend class so she would send these hilarious cards to me and I was going through some things the other day and found one of the hilarious cards from her and she, and sent her a little note and then she sent one back and she remembered how to spell fun <laughs> and she had a great little um, story to catch me up on too it was really nice to hear from her um, but there we are <laughs> is that isn't that a cute card oh i could show you all her cards if i find them all they're just they're all of them are funny one of them has like a a cutout and you put your nose through it i don't remember what that was exactly but it was it was remarkable and as they say it was epic <laughs> this one you're gonna like a lot this is by mary jackson mary jackson is fairly new to the show and um, she is the one that sent in the taco card that's over there on the door. Let me grab it. She doesn't have a lot of stamps or anything. Maybe none, no dies, no stamps. And she still makes really cool cards. So, like, she made this with um, the taco. It was a spicy week. And she made that card. But look at this. This one's really fun. And she said she made it for her niece, who um, broke her foot. Let's see how big these squares are. They're four inches. Okay, four inches by four. So you take, this could be like a, same thing with a little chubby. You have a uh, eight by eight square, <clears throat> square card. And then you just fold it up and make, and she made it an easel card. So that it stands up like that. Pretty darn cute, isn't it? Oh, and she did, She said she was a children's librarian for many years, and she liked this little paper because of, it reminded her of her, some of her favorite nursery stuff. So I'll let you look at that again. She did write a cute, look at this letter that she wrote me. It's, it's the seasoned ladies, crafters that write these remarkable things. But she decided for her the card would be is like a tiny book display, and I like that idea. And the strength of the words is as important as the strength strength of the graphics. So she wrote, "Hope they put you back together again." Heard you were hurting. Um, <laughs> I laughed out loud on this one. It said, "So I'll try to send you a card now and then that is um, specially for you and not for not a discarded failure." <laughs> I'm so thankful. I'd be happy. I wouldn't know the difference, I don't think, if it's a discarded failure or one specially made for me because, you know, that's all fine. But 
I thought that was just really, and it just fits into a business size, a business size envelope, which is what we say about a little chubby. It fits into a business size envelope. So thank you very, very much, Miss Mary. This was a little package of goodies from Lynn Sanders down in Mustang, Oklahoma. And we'll just look at some of these things that I'm going to be putting in goodie bags. All our goodie bags that we give away on Craft Roulette are donated by our viewers. Or somebody. I don't know. I guess they watch. Maybe they don't. Um, cute little uh, paper blossoms. Oh, I do like those. There's some little tool ones, felt ones, and little printed ones. Really cute. Here's a whole bunch of stuff. A pen with a topper and a test tube. <laughs> We could do some things with that. And a bookmark and some papers. I'm not sure what this is. Maybe some stickers under there. Just all sorts of fun stuff, you know. And sometimes when you get something in your stash for a while, you just lose lose the mojo for it, right? And so I think sometimes we get some of those things like, oh, I'm just going to use this for it. And then you think of something else or get involved with something else and it's passed. So... But it's not bad. Somebody else can get it and just be have get some new parameters and get get going with it. So in that that's a cool little stencil. I can see lots of people using that. Here's some um, adhesive stickers and chipboards. Those are oh look at that some motocross. Somebody is going to enjoy these a lot. They're cute. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. And I like things that are flat. It helps me in my postage. Ooh, trick-or-treat banner with some spiders. Woohoo! There was a spider on my ceiling the other night. And I called my, my, my spider hunter, <laughs> Mr. Gun, and he got him for me. It was very good. I was very glad. Because um, I hate killing things, but I don't mind having somebody else <laughs> kill spiders at all. Look at that cool little thing. It's a framed cutting die. I can see people using that one and enjoying it a lot. And then she sent this cool little card. Look at this paper clip. May I, I may need to keep that for if we ever get paper clip. And a sweet little note. She did one of the post-it tricks so that I can use it again for somebody that gets a goodie bag. So Lynn Sanders, you hit you helped us hit the jackpot on that one. That's a lot of goodies. Woohoo! Thank you very, very much. Alright, are you ready for the surprise? Well, we have a patron group. I tell you, they're just full of ideas and wonderment. And, um, oh, before I get to that, I want to say thank you to the, and congratulations to our glitter fairies over on our Facebook group. I did post the 10 top glitter fairies for the last 28 days over on the Facebook group. Patty Beck, 700 and some kind of comments in 28 days. That's just remarkable. And uh, you can see them listed. They're pinned at the top, so you don't miss them these people are going around just making just I call them glitter fairies because they spread sparkle and shine and make our worlds just so much nicer and prettier because they're so kind so it's a lot it's a lot <laughs> to go over there and and make comments that um, have meaning and 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 things it's it always just blows my mind I read almost every comment that is posted I'm having a harder time making comments for everybody but I'm still working on it I'm still doing as much as I can but um, never stop we just love 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 to see all those cards come in um, and and just celebrate each and every episode or everyone that you do let's see what this happens now okay so L paper camera is working just fine. But we had wonderful parameters last week. It, we had an A2 card for a project. Sunflower field plus neutrals for color. I forgot to say the neutrals. Um, element, we had to have something happy. And then random, you had to include some kind of unusual color. After we get the spins, we talk about each and every one of them until we're happy enough to go and face that face the stash so um you guys chime in and add so much to the ideas and i i really do go back and look at all those uh comments because they're rich you guys are 
you're some you're some pretty savvy uh, crafters out there, <laughs> They're super savvy crafters. But so lately, I've been talking about these and just listing people's names, and that just wasn't good enough. No, 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 it was not. And Lisa Taylor, one of our patrons, um, answered in a recent blog. A uh, post that said, no dumb questions, no dumb comments from Mr. Producer, said, hey, you know, could you let us see some cards when Mary's talking about them on Fun University? Well, Lisa Taylor, it's your lucky day, and thank you so much for that great inspiration, because we are going to do it just for you and everybody else. Yay! And the applause went out. Where's my little hands? There they are. It was a wonderful... Mr. Producer worked on it all afternoon. All day? I don't know. He works all the time. Um, so we have this... It's random. I don't know which cards are going to come up out of the 141, and I am going to talk about them. I hope I'm... I hope I make sense. So I'm going to put this here so I can remember the... Para oh, the parameters. Are just, it's just like on Craft Roulette, isn't it? Isn't that clever? So our first, our first card that we're going to talk about, we're going to look and, and see how people use the parameters. Because sometimes I just get caught up in the cards and just look at them and go, oh, it's so cute. Oh, so cute. Oh, so cute. But this time, because... Oh, it's a second. Oh, oh, I'm so relieved from not having jury duty. I'm just feeling like a, like a big blob of protoplasm. But... Um, this time we're going to look at the parameters and the cards and see if we can make sense and get some ideas and learn from them. It didn't take you much long, very long. Okay, good. Yeah, there you go. So this one is from Megan. You can still see where she's from. She's from Illinois. This is her 10th, so we'll get to celebrate her on Friday as a on the achievement board. She's hit her first Zero Hero achievement, so that's exciting. Um, by the way, our YouTube channel, the... Um, Craft Roulette one um, now has ten no about hundred thousand views. So since we started there, so it's a little older than Craft Roulette itself, but it has a hundred thousand views, which is a lot of eyeballs. Um, anyway, Cra Megan sent in this card. Her it was an A two card, so that one is pretty easy. It's a four and a quarter by five and a half standard card that m a lot of crafters use. Sunflower seal. I, I wanted to say that Friday. Sunflower field colors. We were thinking oranges, yellows, t neutrals, of course. Browns, greens, blue sky, that kind of thing um, was, was what we were looking for for sunflower field, unless you could think of something else. <laughs> and then something happy. Uh, cute little lion is super darling happy. And then an unusual color. I'm I'm uh, not a hundred percent sure what she was thinking, but uh, I, I I'm not sure. Maybe there's some purple in there or something that I can't quite see, and I can't see the description, but it'll be okay. So if, I got a feeling she's got something in there that I just maybe some copper. I don't know. But um, su super cute card. I love, we talked last week on Fun University about um, how many styles you guys come up with, with these four parameters. So this would be kind of a cutesy little fun card. I, I love the um, scalloped edge. I don't have a scalloped edge like that, and I think it's or orange foil. Oh, that's very cool. That's what that is. That looks good. Um, and so there's the orange. There's your unexpected. I think you're right, Roberta. Um, super cute card. It couldn't go wrong. She's got a lot of detail on there with the stitching and the scallop and the rounded corners. Um, her placement is great. Her proportion is super good. Um, and he's just cute. Don't you like him? I like him. Thumbs up on this guy. Let's see what else we got. Oh my goodness, there it is. Card Monkey Jarvis sent in this pretty pretty. Um, she is one of our leading ladies, if you don't know, and if you don't know her, and she also leaves wonderful glitter all over the group. We are going to be, I'm going to show you how to make this card tonight. So um, we'll, we'll just keep that, just look at it when it's finished, because mine aren't all the way finished. Well, one's finished. 
Anyway, yep, this one's very cool. If you have a piece of cardstock that is um, five inches, five and a half inches by 12, and your scoring board, you can, and a trimmer, you can make this along with us tonight. So um, at least get the basics done. It is really cool. And Card Monkey is very cool. So uh, she always, she just always throws us a, a curveball and just with something super amazing. Um, like she said in the comments, this isn't that hard. It really isn't. It's just a, it, it's just, it's a mind blower though, isn't it? For somebody who doesn't make cards, wouldn't that just take your breath away? But it does fold down to an A2. Her sunflower colors um, are yellows and, and oranges and greens, I believe. Blue greens is her uh, maybe unusual color, and she has that in some of her flowers. Um, something happy, well, for my beautiful friend. Yep, and then it says, I can't quite read that second that second panel, but um, I, this makes me happy. I think it's gorgeous. Yep, she's been on the show three times. She has her own spoonophone. It's green. <laughs> Mary Ellen Finley from Wisconsin sent in this beautiful card. Isn't that uh, cut work? It looks like cut work. The die pretty. I love that die so much. And uh, I like that it's just in that upper corner or could be on a lower corner. But it looks like lace work on a lady's blouse or something. I think it's, I think it's very, very pretty. Um, her unusual color was a red bee, and I really like that red bee sticking out there. And um, her hello and her pretty flower, just it's just a really pretty card. I like it very much. I like that green underneath it. Um, man, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the, what could you take away from this? It's a great A2 card. You've got the sunflower colors. Now, this is one of those things we had the colors were sunflower. You didn't have to make sunflowers. It was just the colors. But a lot of people did use the sunflower as the element, too. And uh, because something happy was so um, abstract that you could you could use the colors as the element also. And um, so it was kind of a fun week that way. I, I like stuff like that. And it... Sometimes you guys take it very literally. Sometimes you go, oh, I'm going to twist this around a little bit, and you just never know what you're going to get. Yes, dainty and delicate. Those are those are good adjectives for that pretty, pretty dye. I like it. Thank you so much, Mary Ellen, for send, sending that in. You know, whenever I see her name, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen, we used to have a lady at the lake, and her husband, Jim, used to say, Mary Ellen, Mary Ellen, stop your yelling. And I always want to say that. I always think of them. But um, anyway, I'm... I'm that's it. I, I'll try never to say that again. Caitlin Anthony, who will be on in a couple weeks, made this pretty card. Another A2, a sunflower field. This was an unusual, she did a little um, story with this and told about that this is an unusual kind of sunflower. And she even had the picture of it. So it was very cool. Um, I like how she... Um, adds dimension by doing a l some really delicate but very distinct um, edging, ink edging. See on the on her wood background, that's a cool tech trick too, isn't it? Just making your um, you've got the base of your card, and she's got some really nice texture on that, and then she's got the mat, which looks wood, and I think it looks like a die. And um, then she's got a little bit of edging on it, and, it's, and it looks very deep and pretty. But it's more of a halo around the focal point, so it really stands out pretty. Um, her coloring on her leaves, super, super pretty. The flower itself is gorgeous. She obviously used some dyes. Something happy, she used it in her sentiment. Yeah, it's a some kind of fancy sunflower, Berta. Um, and an unusual color was obviously it wasn't a normal... A normal color, sunflower color. Um, yeah, I think it's just really pretty. I think, you know, I think the embossing folder itself maybe um, was a dye too. Maybe it cut that edges. I don't know. Oh, those mysteries that go on in people's craft rooms. <laughs> but it is stunning for sure. You are right. Can't wait to have her back on the show. She is a sweetheart. 
Nina from Arizona sent in this pretty card. This is just her third. If you're watching tonight, welcome. I don't don't get to interact too much with new people as much as I used to when there was only three or four of us. <laughs> but I sure appreciate each and every one of you. Um, an A2 size card. Looks like you used a craft background. A sunflower field colors. You've got greens, yellows, oranges. Real, real pretty combination with the dark greens and the light greens and the light yellows and the whites and um, the different colors in the orangey flower. That's real pretty. Something happy. Happy birthday. There's a. Ha I didn't even think of that. Happy and happy birthday. Yeah, that was a... Duh. <laughs> I'm gonna give my forehead a smack, my well brain kit, my well kissed brain a smack on the head. Uh, unusual color. Um, I think it was probably with the dragonfly would be my guess. And uh, it's hard, you know. And there's another thing. We've had this happen too, where we have very specific colors, and then you go and take the picture of it, and it doesn't show up, and you can't see it. So sometimes you see, look at a card, and you go, "Oh, they forgot that," but or they broke the rule or whatever. And I, um, but it's often just because of the camera and the way it's been, the photos been taken and things. So we we just don't call. Deputy Heidi too often every once in a while, but not too often, do we? <laughs> anyway, super pretty, Nina. Thank you so much. Sue Kramer from Minnesota, USA, has sent in her 18th card. And look at all those cute little pots. I love pots of plants. They're just so cute. Heidi, you're ready, aren't you, Heidi? She's going to be flashing her badge. If you are new to Craft Roulette or Fun University, Deputy Heidi is our deputy she has the badge to prove it and it the there's a lot of tradition and folklore on craft roulette and it's all on our website craftroulette.live uh, at least we try to put it all on there i think sometimes we end up having such new folklore so fast that it's hard to keep up but um it's there and so if you ever wonder what KYB is and scoot and all these funny things that we talk about and Deputy Heidi and the craft police and all these things. A lot of it is over there on the um, on the website. So go ahead and take a look. I cannot read those, uh, Patty, but I, I see that you're liking them. And I remember reading them and I thought they were cute. But an A2 size card, sunflower field color, something that's happy, some growing some stuff, and uh, unusual colors. I think she had some, once again, I can't see the colors as well as I'd hoped, but I think she's got some interesting twists of leaves in there. So, um, very cute. Very cute card. Very cute card. I like that you included the blue at the top and some the um, twine and everything and then having a couple layers that looks really good along with your pots and the way you carry it over the colors on the pots real cute love it it's it's cute if you don't know what that is it's a word i've and i remind i remind you i have sent that into the urban dictionary even though i don't know oh okay sue kramer you're you're very welcome do you know, can you write down with the, oh, well, we'll just look at it. I can't see it right here, but um, I'll take another peek at it and see what those say so I can remember. <laughs> it's cute. It's cute. Karen C. from Gaithersburg, Maryland sent in this card. And I love a good oval. I like wood that's curved and I like a good oval. You know, they're just good, sh good shapes and uh, those soft lines make me happy. Um, I hope I'm on the right one. So, anyway, this one's really pretty. She's got the ombre look, inked blend look in the background with the sunflower colors. It's an A2 card, obviously. And completely different with the, um, a lot of white, white area and everything. And that bent tree, that poor bent tree. It is either bent from time and and age or it's in a heck of a windstorm i'm not sure which but um it sure looks good and it's bent wood so it's a beautiful autumn color and card it's very very pretty and uh i i just like it it has good good mojo vibes doesn't it i think it's just really pretty and karen this is your 61st card isn't that remarkable 
Doesn't it sometimes just make you go, what the heck? How did I make 61 cards already? By the way, did you see that Patty and Card Monkey both received their mugs? And we did open up a new album on our Facebook group for the Mug Club. Uh, to be in the Mug Club, you need to have sent in 100 cards to Craft Roulette. We think that that just is worthy of a little special um, celebration. And um, I'm not able to take pictures of them because I ordered them and I can't take a picture of it while I'm before it's ordered. And I have it shipped directly to you. So um, I'm looking forward to getting to see those mugs in action and, and seeing what you do to take their picture and add it up so we can see. It's a, I designed the mug. It's kind of trashy, but it's kind of at the same time very fun. It's got a lot of a lot going on, but that's kind of how I am. So anyway, the mug club. Michelle from Fort Myers, Florida. This is her first. Okay, I'm happy to have somebody that was her first. Um, this is, I really liked the way she had the paper, the choice of her paper underneath all those die cut words. Uh, super, super effective, I thought, especially since she used the um, sunflower field paper. I mean, it was like, yep, she's got all the sunflower colors because she used sunflower paper. And something happy. Well, there's four times the happy right there, isn't it? Oh, that's fine, Patty Beck. Don't worry about it. It's anytime before Thanksgiving, you know, I, 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 I hurry up and wait all the time. But we would love to see it. Um, the bees are so, so very, very cute. And uh, it's just a really great first card, Michelle. We look forward to more cards from you. How about two more? Feline Mays, she's been with us for so long. She's at 78. Now she know. Now she's going to be thinking, ooh, Mug Club, 100 Mug Club. I'm going for it. And there, it will be fun to be able to send her a, a mug. But she makes beautiful, beautiful cards. She's from Oregon. And she went with the unusual color as her dominant color. Isn't that just the best? Um, I love how people interpret all these silly parameters. A2 size card, sunflower field colors. She's got the green, the gold, um, some splatters in there, but then something happy, you make me smile. That's a sweet way to say, use a happy element. And then an unusual color as her dominant color. I think that's really cool. Well, well twisted, <laughs> well twisted, sister. And um, super great card for number 78. One more. Jean Addis also has sent in many cards. She's on her 44th. Um, she lives in North Carolina, USA. And she sent us a pretty A2 size card with sunflower field colors with actual sunflowers. Again, she took the colors and used it as an element, which is totally cool. No need to call Deputy Heidi. And um, her something happy was so happy for you. Using the sentiment it was a great way to um, be able to fit that happy thing in. Um, happy doesn't always, I mean, it's just how you take it. These are your art projects. So it's how you interpret it and decide how to take it. I just, it's just a phenomenal thing to watch. And then her unusual color, hmm, I'm not sure. I got a feeling that she's got some shading in there or something that I can't quite see. But um, it's in there. That's Look at that pretty leaf that is has a skeleton leaf that one's really pretty and i that scalloped edge with the out the parts that are stuck out whatever that's called well you know what i'm talking about right you've been around me long enough <laughs> so anyway super great i think these were I, I think this was great to be able i didn't know which cards were going to come up and there's no way i could pick them so uh and plus you know we all have our preferences so if i is the pink is the bee pink under this light I can't set, tell but maybe so see I need you guys your eyes so um maybe Lynn um I, I know she's everybody she picked it she figured it out she's a she's a veteran here I think once you have sent in 40 cards you're pretty much a veteran you understand it pretty darn well <laughs> either that or you've met Deputy Heidi but anyway I could never choose and one of the reasons is because I like I have certain styles that I prefer and they are not um, something I think of they're just kind of subliminal and I would 
it would it's never that good either i'm not that i don't have that good a taste so it's better to have just this random and thank you very much mr producer for setting this up for us i really i think it was great i liked it all right let's oh i gotta do paper cam back over here jeep 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 so note if you're listening mr producer we need to get that paper cam under that folder okie doke all righty all righty here's my little see i have this little cute oh i don't have the right oh never mind so okay that was fun i like talking about cards it's always just a good time i don't know i wonder how many that was 141 so far gwen uh, i think 141 last week we had 160 which is nuts but um, with this being a holiday for Canada and the United States, I was anticipating not being maybe quite as busy, but we're, we'll be fine. F the four A's, count them four, but there's actually five. So I, I wrote the title. <laughs> I wrote the title before I really... Then Sharon Ware said, oh, here's another A. I hope you, I hope you included this, and I hadn't. So she's the last A. <laughs> So we're going to get to that. but So I'll have to change the title. But the four A's of boo-boo cards. All right. What do you do when you make a mistake? So I just pulled this guy out. He's a little digital stamp, and I can't remember where I got him. But he sure is cute. And um, who's thinking about you? So a couple things that happened. When most common boo-boos, I think, in uh, card making include smudges, right? Yes, smudges, those terrible, nasty things. So what can happen when you get a smudge is sometimes you'll get ink on the outside. Uh, not that this beautiful, pristine ink pad would ever have ink on the outside. But sometimes you will get a little ink on the outside of a, a stamp pad. And then you go and wipe it off and look what happens. And then you pick up your card and, oh, right. And when does that usually happen? It usually happens right at the very end, right? So there's a couple things that are go-to fixes on these on a smudge like this. It depends on what the smudge looks like. You can always just repeat the smudge. <laughs> just just do some more. Um, I don't remember if it was Gerda Steiner or not, Christina. I I I, I I'll try to find it. Um, I'll try to find it. So you can always try to repeat the smudge, and so we will do that a little bit. Maybe just make a little edge of smudges. And if it's really, if it's something you like, you know, you can go ahead and do some more. Then if you, maybe you go, oh, you know, I don't really like that. Uh, one, a couple things that you can do is avoid it. Um, so these are my, my A for avoiding. I have a wet washcloth right here that I keep um, in a little in a little bin, wet it up when I know I'm gonna be at my desk have to do this every once in a while and I oh my gosh I used to if Sherry Bradley's watching she has told me to wipe my surface down more than more than my mother ever said wipe your face um so I keep a wet washcloth right here because I'm messy yes crinkle inkle this looks like crinkle inkle doesn't it and so you could you could do crinkle inkle with something like this and then he has a whole little texturing from a smudge, a smudge cover. And you know, you could then, if you did some inking on that, that might look really cool with some grays or some blues. And you could get away with all sorts of stuff with that just being some texture. So one thing is to avoid smudges is keep your fingers clean if you can and keep your surfaces clean, including your ink pads and um, things like this. They, they pick up stuff. They just, they just pick up stuff. It's just like velvet picks up fur. So avoiding that. Um, another thing for a common mistake on these kind of things happened to Sharon on Friday night. So you're going along. And all of a sudden, oh, you slip. Oh, I feel like I'm doing that fun, fun university commercial. So, okay, then you think, okay, I've got the whole darn card put together. This is the last thing I was doing. I'm going to just repeat it. And that's, that's actually a very 
fair thing to do. Just repeat your smudge and make it look like you intended to do it. You can add some more squiggles, especially on lines. And that's basically repeating it again. So this poor guy's getting to, he's actually getting some good texturing going on with, this, with the goofs. You can also add some more little details to make it look like, oh yeah, that was intentional. <laughs> Nobody saw you go, oh, dirty wrecking present when it happened. They're just going to see that you had so oh man, look at that cool little detail on there. I love that. You can also start adding some little um, little nibs on micron pens or small pens like this are excellent ways to add little details that cover up problems. <laughs> so you can actually just do some of this also when you get your hands get a little in the independent independent hands and so you can just add some texture that actually it looks kind of cool I'll be darned here's another one that happens uh, sometimes to me I don't know if it happens to you but um, I will be going along and oh there it goes right outside the line okay what are we going to do what did we do with the other ones we repeated it so why not just make him look a little off register and not worry about getting him all in the lines ever anywhere. There is a look for that. If you look at our website, look at the um, our lettering. It has that look. I'm obviously not trying too hard to make it very pretty. But if you look at the lettering, it has that offset register. So you can do that. This is a, not avoiding it, but it's fixed. These are just some fast fix. Another thing that I like to do when I have something out of the line is take a gray pen and just go over the outside. Somehow or other, it doesn't look as bad that way. If you have a lighter, a lighter pen that you went out of the line with, you can use a lighter gray. And it looks pretty good when you cut it out, too. There you go. And that's always a, an option, too. If you haven't avoided to have your hands clean, you can always just cut out your focal and start and mat it on something and make it another, add it as another image that's all by itself. The only problem is if you didn't want it to be flat. But yeah, you like the gray. The sometimes people will also take a white pen and um, fix fix little lines that are out little smudges outside the line. You can sometimes do that too if it's light enough color. Yep, it looks like a little shadow, doesn't it, Becky B? And you know, shadow is a random element, so keep that one in mind. You never know if we're gonna, when we're going to get it, but we probably will. And he's so cute. Look how fast he was, and he, it's. It, I don't even mind that he's not all the way filled in. I think he's kind of cute that way. I'm not all the way filled in. <laughs> and I'm kind of cute, you know, in a way. So avoiding problems is a really great thing. But if you do have a problem, those are some quick fixes. Another thing is don't, this since this is flat, we don't have this issue. But if you have a lot of pieces, don't glue everything until you're done. Um, channel my Bob Rossi. Yes, my Bob Ross. You bet. Um, I don't know. I've watched only a few of him. I should probably watch him again. But uh, so avoid avoid the problems in the first place. Easy fixes are always great. If and but if you do make those mistakes, a couple things you can do is um, accent. There's your second A. Accent the mistake. Oh, I forgot that this was the part that I just already did. But you can accent the mistake and take time to make it the positive, such as if you this whole mistake over here, you can repeat it. You can cut it off. Say, I don't like this well enough. I can do that teabag thing that we did, that teabag cut that Sharon did. It was actually very cute. It ended up nice. And you could cut out these parts. 
Obviously, my next problem is that I'm not avoiding is cutting straight. But another thing you can do is cut out your focal point, assuming that your focal point isn't the problem, but that you've had these little other things going on. And then you can reassign it to another card base. Um, but so you can cut out the best parts and use it again. You can also, I do, I want to see what he looks like. When he, you can make him a little bit of a hexagon, couldn't you? Uh, I want to bring in some blending ink here, but I'll probably do it tonight after the after this, and show you tomorrow on Facebook. So that's a wonky thing. Holy smokes! That's pretty. This is I could get really into my inner Lucy on the Christmas tree episode. Okay, we're on. Quit it, Mary. There's another one. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to bring in some blue because I think he's kind of cute. But you can bring him in and put him on another card. That's a real easy fix, too. And cover up your uh, mistakes with another. Uh, covering up is important. You can cover up with another sentiment. That happens a lot. With When you get a sentiment, you get a... Oh, everything's all ready. Everything's all where you want it. And then you stamp a crooked sentiment. Probably won't happen as much with a misty, but if you don't have a misty or you forget and you get in a hurry or whatever, you can always cut another sentiment and put it over the mistake. If you have another mistake, that only one little mistake, you can always cut off the whatever you don't want and then just cover up what you wherever the boo-boo was and accent the good part because most of it will be just fine um you can mark or you can also bring in i had some sequins in here so you can also bring in some little embellishments and cover up your mistakes at least primarily <laughs> that looks pretty weird there we go it looks pretty weird. But you can cover it. That probably wouldn't be the best thing. But if you had some other little pieces that were just stuck down and causing you grief, you can just cover them up with some little embellishments. And that's a really fast way, too. So you can avoid it. That's a great thing. Accent it. That's even. That's just fine, too. Another thing is arranging. So I think this is, some, this is my downfall. I, when I go to arrange a card, I think, oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm, I'm ready. I'm going to, I got it. This is, this is the card. This is the way it's going to be. So I'll get my pieces together. I don't know if this has ever happened to you. <laughs> and I get my pieces together. I obviously did a bunch of stamping on this craft paper. And it's just been waiting for me. I did make a card with it though. And I'm going to show you in just a second. And then I decide I either make a mistake, like I was showing you before with the smudges and the messes like that, or I change the sentiment, or I decide, oh, I think I want to do a background. And so I do a background while everything's already glued down, and it all of a sudden looks bad. Um, and so everything's glued down and now I'm stuck because I can't get the background blended white because I've got these guys in the way and they're they're stuck and they're stuck really well because I use good glue. Um, so one of the things is to arrange your things. Spend some time with it. Um, sometimes we we get a little artistic. Oh, well, let's just have these falling out of the sky, which probably is just fine. But is that really what we want? So just spend some time thinking about what your card is going, what it's going to look like. Do you need to make a, bring it down into a frame a little bit? Do you want, are you looking for some, a scene? That's a whole nother thing than falling gnomes. And uh, do you want a scene? Do you want, do you want it floating? I have a thing about floating elements, but not too, I, they always kind of get me. But um, the floating, or do you want them in the middle? Or do you want them just to edge, just a little bit down toward the bottom for a little weight? Do you need some diagonals? Do you need to add a little wonkiness to make it playful? There, do you need to make it, so they're not touching because somebody doesn't want their mashed potatoes touching their turkey. Um, you know, but that, if you do the no mashed potatoes and turkey t thing, 
it, it gets a little formal feeling and a little stiff. So do you want to play around and have it so that um, it's just a little more friendly and, and casual? All these different things that you can decide. Um, do you need to flip it around another way to make it look better? Maybe, maybe do something unusual like make the sentiment go um, a different way. Do we want, here's something, do we want toadstool gnome by size? Are we going to have it like that or are we going to, are we going to have the gnome on the outside? Are we going to have the pumpkin on the outside? To me that feels very awkward because you're very heavy over here and very not right over there. So I automatically put the, put that guy over there, him over here and with the little pumpkin touching because that makes it feel a little more cozy and a little more put together, like an element, one element, instead of just these disparate pieces. So um, arranging is our third A, and it's the pieces need to make sense together. You may need to flip them up and down. You may need to change your card size. You may need to change your mat size. Um, maybe, you know, sometimes you can get, you can throw in another piece of something that's cute, and it may not make sense. This is a real pretty, these are really pretty, but, and I don't think it makes sense with something that's primarily gnomish. Now, in mixed media, we have a whole thing on that on Patreon, but just kind of make sure that everybody's making sense. Um, again, think of the background, the foreground. Who's, who's going to, who's going to be wanting to be the star? It's going to be your focal point. And so you can think of different things like that too. There is quite a bit that you can think about. There's a random background for you. And since these guys aren't colored in, they look a little a little lost on, on the back of it. It's really pretty, though. But they look a little bit lost, except that I do like that it pulls it in a little bit. So here's something that I... I like to do, I know, especially on Friday nights, I'll do a card and then I come back the next day and go, hmm, no, that's not quite right. Now is it? And so uh, I walk away from it for a while before I glue everything down. If I think it's going to get glued down and Kerwin's going to come in and make a mess or whatever, I take a picture of it. I also like to take a picture of it and put it on a larger screen. And sometimes you can see things like that that um, you can't see when you're just getting a little myopic and being very... So it's hard to see the, the forest for the trees, so to speak. So um, arrange things. Let it sit. If it's a new arrangement, if it's a design that you use all the time and you're comfortable with it, you know, you don't have to at all. But if it's something new and you're trying it out, you're, it's a scene, maybe it just make you know, you just give yourself, you've spent a lot of time cutting, coloring, all that kind of things. Give yourself a little simmer time too and, um, and see if it's, see if it works. But do take a picture of it in case something, if it's not glued down, you, when you come back, it's not destroyed <laughs> so that you can still make sense of it. Um, when you do add your pieces, this is the fourth A, when you do add your pieces, here's a real, real good A tip. Make sure you have the fold where you want it uh, before you start gluing down. If I, I have made more cards that open this way and open this way than I dare say. But um, anyway, it just that's a really slow down and make sure that you've got the card on the fold where you want it. If it's a complicated card, um, like a scene, and you haven't taken a picture of it, I would say take a picture of it because that way you won't end up with a mouse that ends up under a teacup or whatever. Um, you'll be more you'll be more able to arrange your picture better before you start adding all the glue. Um, another thing I like to do is not put glue right up to the edge. I like to just, not, you know, there's that little flappy thing. But at the same time, if I want to add something and I want it tucked under, then I like to be able to do, to do that. So when I put on glue, um, I used to say do it clear to the edge, but I don't now. I just put it toward the, toward the edges so I can stick stuff underneath it. Um, just 
here's another one that happens. This happens to me on the show a lot. I'll have a pretty good card, and then I think, you know, I just want to add one more thing. And that one more thing that I often want to add is, like, stamping directly on the card. And I catch myself when I'm, when I'm smart to not do it. I did do that on this card. I wanted to... I, wanted, I ended up wanting to add this little wheat right in here because there wasn't anything. But I ended up adding a pumpkin. It was somewhere in here. So I ended up adding a pumpkin, which was something I could glue on, not stamp on. That's a, that can be a real problem. And then you end up with a dumb, a dumb thing <laughs> that you have to go back to um, accenting and adding things to make your mistake a, a positive. So... Uh, just that last, oh, that last thing. Oh, I just want one more thing. That can be a real bad mistake. Just let it sit there. If you want to, if you want to take a stamp and stamp it out on vellum and then stick it on the card and just let it sit there and see if it looks good, you can do something like that. And I would suggest, especially after you have everything glued down. And so those are just some things. Don't well, I added these these guys. Here's something that <laughs> it was it was risky. After I had everything down, I added these hearts, and um, experience said make sure that those hearts are clean. So I did that, and that was probably a good idea because sometimes I, that stamp is not clean. So it turned out happy, happy. But it, you got to test a few things and and just be really aware sometimes. The fifth A is from Sharon, it's, and it's accept. And um, not every card is going to be a masterpiece. Oh, my gosh, I'm really late. Not every card is going to be a masterpiece. Don't hold back. Just kiss your brain and move on. Here is the shortened version of Ellen's card. It's See how this is just the shortened version. I'm just going to give you the numbers because it's so late. Um, this little card... It's an A2 size card, and it's not hard. You have to have 12 inches long. So if you don't have 12 inch paper, um, you could probably make it up to here and then put another piece on the back. But um, and then you score at two, four, six, and eight. So that's not hard. Two, four, six, and eight, and then you have to have a either a straight edge. Or one of these kind of one of these kind of cutters, and so if you go, I, you can do the scoring on this too. This is five and a half by twelve. So I'm going to make this one is the extra long version, which is the one that Ellen really used, and this is five and a fourth by twelve. This one's five and a half by twelve, and you score it two. Her version, her sample is so good. I'm just going to let you go with it. Two, four, six. I don't have to put it together. I'll just show you how to cut it. That's enough secret. Six. You know, and if you don't have one that goes out this far, you can fold this and put it at the two again. And try it again. Two. And put the fold at the two and do another score line. Okay, so let's go ahead and give these guys a crease -a Gosh, I thought I was so tired. I am so relieved with this jury duty. Ugh, so, okay, and then, um, like, I think I did an inch and three-fourths. And you just go from the first, I wonder if you can see this better on the back. You go from the first fold to the last fold, not the ends, but the folds, this little blade will be right, uh, going this way will be underneath where this is. It goes like here and here, and it matches right there in the middle, and that's where the blade is. Drop it down and go down to this little, whoopsie, this little line. Hello, hello, wrong way, wrong way, Jose. There we go. Lift it up, and I don't want to figure out how tall to make it, so I'm going to go turn it and do one and three-fourths, and do it again. There we go. This is real good for the paper that you get from my paper boyfriend, Michaels, because it's white on the back, 
and it works real well. So now you've got to figure out all these little mountains and valleys. So if you have a mountain here, you're going to go mountain, and then this guy's going to be a valley on the outside. So you've got mountain, whole, whole line, mountain. Then this guy is going to be a mountain while these guys are being valleys. This guy is going to be a mountain sticking up while this guy goes into the valley. These guys, how did this one work? Oh, this is where we go. Okay. And so we keep going mountain, valley, mountain, valley, accordion jumping. Yep. And so that it ends up looking like such, which looks very benign. And then it comes out like this. Oh, then you can see from the top, this is really handy, um, how it's supposed to be on the bottom. So if this, if your top two are folding backwards, your middle one needs to be folding forwards. If your top ones are folding forwards, the middle one needs to be folding backwards. And it's just these, this little thing that has to be the opposite. So if you have these two on the outside as mountain folds, they're the ones that are sticking up. The next two, top and bottom, are going to be valley. The middle two, top and bottom, the middle full, top and bottom, are going to be mountains again. And then these guys are going to be the opposite. This Just the center section, these four panels, are going to be the opposite of whatever the other ones are. So then when it folds shut... You, you need to pop out, buddy. So when it folds shut, you just have this one little, these two little pieces sticking out. Because they were these two folds that were sticking up while the other guys were all sticking down. And then when you go to decorate them, you just want to take, the th the only tips I have on that is just shoot your measurement, see how big the panels are, go a fourth of an inch smaller, and don't cross over the folds. Because if you cross over the folds, you're going to get thicker pieces and it's going to be a prank. A pain but this is makes then if you want to do just the smaller one it's still 12 by five and a half and then you leave a uh, four inch a four inch back on it so that one's really easy it's when it, you get ellenized it and you get that all that extra in there and it, it gets complicated but it, you just keep folding with it until the the middle panels are doing the opposite of the base card and it is very cute it is super cute so i would highly suggest it i will have the details for fun supporters and up on our patreon including um diagrams but uh hopefully that will make sense you can I'll fold it up one more time. Okay, so watch this part. <laughs> watch. Nope, nope, don't watch that one. Watch this one. Okay, so I've got this mess, and it says the first one is all mountain, so we're going to fold it forward. The second part, the valley, valley. So he's going to go under, under. You kind of have to grab it with your ha one hand. Then this guy, this middle part, is going to be a mountain. So he sticks up. Then this guy is going to, this base of the card will be another mountain. You can grab it. And another mountain right down here. And then this guy is going to be doing the opposite. And then when you get done folding, I guess you don't have to fold that one. Yeah, you do. No, you don't. You don't have to fold that one. I was thinking I was going to put it on a card base. But you don't have to fold this one, I guess. You just have to cut to it. There you go. Because then it's going to come out. But if you want to fold it, you can fold it under, and then you can put that on a card base. Where's a card base? And then you would have a card inside to write on and whatnot. And you could put paper on there and all, all those kind of things. 
You can play with it. It's just going to be another one of those crazy cards that you can play with. Not a right, right way or a wrong way, but it, it can get kind of complicated. I would definitely try this first. And I think it turned out cute. All right, that's enough. That's enough. I didn't mean to keep you so long. Do want to thank our patrons. Good heavens, I just really... <laughs> I went a long time. I got so excited. I'm not kidding. I was so stressed out about that jury. Um, do thank our patrons. Uh, we're doing a lot over there. It's getting better and better, and, and you don't even know what else we're going to be doing because it's secret and it's fun. Yeah, fun folds drive me crazy too. And Heidi Ryan, D Deputy Heidi Ryan, will you please arrest me if I ever try to show one online again? Ugh. Uh, just come right here and arrest me. Take me, take me to prison, and then I will fight. I will have a jury of my peers right here that say, "Should you ever do that again, Mary Gunn, we will never let you on online again." But look at all those beautiful, beautiful people. We are having a lot of fun. We have some calls coming up, um, some more um, excitement that we haven't told you about. This website is getting better and better for you. Uh, there's a private blog and I put a lot of stuff on there. This week, well actually this month, we're working on clusters. For instance, on for everybody gets in on that. Um, how to make clusters because that's kind of a, you don't have to fold anything. Every time I think I'm going to be able to do it. It just drives me nuts. We'll announce our new patrons this week on Friday uh, when we all meet again at Fun University. No, no, at Craft Roulette we will be having, what is that one? I'm down to one sheet on this. Um, oh, I know. I wanted to say Amanda Stevens um, from Pear Blossom Press and Crafty Al both have said about our patron blog that it's the best five dollars they ever spend. Uh, they spend. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that means for better than coffee and better than an ink pad or what. But anyway, they say it's a great five dollars. So we we try hard. Um, you do get a lot of comment content and if you want to look at it it's patreon.com merry gun fun you can see all the stuff that we give you for saying thank you and you get extended you get extended submissions um our veto polls are up for our fun supporters and up gwen um they are up right now they uh the polls are up and the questions are up for um friday night which we get to welcome kendra morgan to the second time to the wheel so, looking forward to seeing Kendra. She has a great card challenge, too. Um, whole different approach. And I know a lot of you like making her cards as well. So, yep, she's got a great card challenge. Crafty Owl has a great card challenge. And then we have Fun Folds. I'm going to kiss my brain anyway. And I'm going to kiss this little gnome's brain. Mm-hmm. He needs a kiss. Mm, one right for me. One for you. You guys stay safe, behave, don't end up in court, and um, we will see you Friday, 6.10 for the, what is it called? The tra tailgating slideshow, and um, then show starts at 6.30. Congratulations, Paul McBeth, on your world championship disc golfing. Good night. <laughs>